Hello friends, it's Dave here from Save Decks, here to bring you a review of Hammer Kid, coming to the Nintendo Switch on the 21st of January. It normally sells for £8.99, but up until the 30th of January, it has an 80% discount at £1.79. But for one lucky viewer here, this will not cost a thing, because not only did the publisher very kindly supply me with a review copy, thank you very much, but they also gave me a second code that I can pass on to one of you. Details will be at the end of the video, so stick around and make sure you're subscribed to see if you win. So what is Hammer Kid? This is a 2D action platformer where you take control of the titular Hammer Kid, who is a kid with a hammer funnily enough and seems to be inspired by Thor, which I love to see. There is a threat to the world by the main bad guy, Simon Spitfire, unleashing monsters on Vivid Island. So, how will you stop him? Well, I think the hammer will help. Your main goal of this game is simply to get to the end of the levels. You can run and jump your way through. When you begin the level, you have a pitiful close range attack, but hitting the block with a sword logo on will unleash your mighty hammer and you'll get given a stronger attack with it, kind of like collecting the stronger weapon in Castlevania. When you begin a level, you keep the hammer that you had in the previous level, but if you die and restart the stage, then you need to collect it again. There is no real upgrade system other than finding the hammer initially, until near the end of the game that is, but it never takes long for the game to provide you with the hammer again when you lose it. You also unlock new abilities through the game. Taking out a world boss or mini boss usually results in an upgrade, things like a double jump, wall jumping, and being able to throw the hammer, and these all help you to feel more powerful. It's not until towards the very end of the game that you get the ability to rapid fire just by holding the attack button down, which should have been brought into the game a lot earlier, as I found myself just hammering the button the whole way through. Very annoying. But the controls for the most part feel great. It was responsive and simple to get used to. The only thing I really had trouble with was the wall jumping as I'm used to being able to press jump while leaning towards the wall but here you need to push the stick in the opposite direction before you can jump that way which took a while to get used to although the wall jump was only really needed a couple of times. There are 40 levels in this game split into 4 worlds of 10 levels each. All of them have a theme, beginning with your mountains, then the underground caves. You later get snowy levels and a volcano area, but I'm not going to show beyond the first half of the game in this review. Although you can simply beat a level just by reaching the end, there are optional collectibles to find in each stage. Three red gems and a number of green ones. I found the number of green gems displayed did give me an idea of how long the level will be. I didn't collect every single one of them in my playthrough, so I don't know if you get anything for collecting them all, but there are several things I can't tell you about this game, simply because the game didn't really explain things very well. Now that's not a problem on the whole, the premise is simple enough to understand, just get from A to B and defeat enemies along the way, but I couldn't help but feel the game needed to communicate with me on several things. Firstly, why do I need to collect these gems? And is there any difference between the small green ones and big red ones? You aren't able to replay levels once you've beaten them, so all it did was tell me how many I got overall during the end credits. So I assume it's just a high score thing, but it would have been nice to have a level select included so that I can replay certain levels I missed a few gems on. Another thing that confused me was after I had my hammer upgrade, there were still blocks to give me items. One was a heart, that gives you an extra hit point, without it, it's a one hit kill. But after that, these blocks will give you food, such as burgers or ice cream, but I can't see any purpose in them. There is no score displayed, so it can't be for points. Sometimes enemies drop them as well, but I can't see any reason for them being there. And let's talk about the heart. Like I said, for the most part, if you touch an enemy or get hit by a projectile, it's a one-hit kill, which I do not mind at all, especially since collecting a heart gains you an extra hit point. But when you have that extra hit point, there is no visual indication that you have it. No changes are made to your appearance, there's no extra symbol on the UI, you just need to remember whether you have the hit point or not. Just little touches like this can make a huge difference to the overall experience. 
But disregarding all that, if you ignore the gem collecting and play it as a straight platformer, then I had a fun time, for the most part. I will warn you that this is a difficult game. I would die many times on the same levels and unfortunately I can't say it was always my fault. Some levels are linear and others require some exploration, because you need to find switches to open doors for instance, and here look I managed to die during the cutscene of the door opening. There are also times when spikes will appear out of the floor as you go past, but it's really hard to make out any difference between these floors and the safe places, so I found this game to be very frustrating at times, especially with the lack of checkpoints. But the levels weren't too long as the timer would tell me how fast I did it in, displaying it as a new record, which see, lets me see the potential of this as a nice feature, but the fact that you can't freely replay levels takes away from this time trial element they're hinting at. The boss fights themselves though I found to be challenging but really well designed. It would take several, or many, attempts to work out the patterns, but they were always consistent, so with practice I had a great time with them. I thought the game's presentation was really nice as well, 16-bit pixel art which looks like it would have belonged nicely on the Mega Drive. The sound effects brought me back to that era as well, and the differences between the four worlds made each one of them distinctive and memorable, and although some things could have been more clear visually, particularly in the UI, it overall ran very well. When I beat the game I had spent 4 hours or more according to my Switch, which I thought was a decent length of time for the price, and especially for that discount, but be warned this is a difficult platformer that doesn't always feel fair, and it can feel a bit unfinished at times, although it is perfectly playable, it just feels like there are certain features missing, such as the ability to replay levels and a UI that displays your health or a score. I definitely recommend it for that sale price, but at full price, I would just say wait for a sale. I can definitely see a lot of potential here. This is a greatly designed game for the most part, just again, if they're going to make a follow-up game to this, a few little tweaks, a few little features added can really enhance the experience and we could get something great here. But for one of you lucky viewers, you won't need to spend one single penny on the game, as we have a spare copy to give away. Here is how you can enter. Firstly, make sure you have a European Nintendo Switch account, as it is an EU code. If you are outside of Europe, then it is easy to create one, just google how to do it, it only takes 5 minutes. Secondly, leave a comment telling us what game you've been playing lately that could have used a couple of extra features. For example, I think Mario Golf Super Rush should have had the mini golf mode returned to it. It's so annoying that they keep leaving it out. You have until the 21st of January 3pm GMT to enter. At that point we will do a random draw of everyone who entered. A video of the draw will be shared on our Discord. Link to that is in the description. So best of luck to you and thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more to come in the future and we'll see you in the next one.